Catholic Daily Journal for Sunday, February the 24th, 2019. According to the Roman Martyrology, today is the birthday of St. Matthias, the apostle who was appointed to replace Judas Iscariot. It's easy to forget that there were plenty of people who followed Jesus basically from the beginning. There were his 12 apostles, there were several women, and there was a group of disciples. And at certain points, Jesus pulls aside his apostles to explain things to them privately, but he was always at the head of a large crew. And after Judas' death, Peter appointed a replacement by drawing lots between two of those men, and St. Matthias was chosen. As with all the apostles save John, he died a martyr. We have no idea in what year, but tradition tells us that today is the birthday of the replacement apostle, Matthias. Jumping ahead a bit to 1803, the Supreme Court of the United States, then only 14 years old, heard the case of William Marbury, who had been appointed and commissioned as a judge by President Thomas Jefferson, but whose commission had not been formalized when President John Adams took office. President Adams, believing that any of his predecessor's incomplete work was his own to deal with, instructed his Secretary of State, James Madison, to consider all proposed but unformalized commissions to be null and void. Marbury sued the president in the Supreme Court, which found itself in somewhat uncharted waters. Chief Justice John Marshall found in favor of Marbury, but they didn't simply order the president to do this or that. Instead, they found that the shiny new U.S. Constitution, which established the Supreme Court, gave them the authority to adjudicate matters precisely like this and that the result of that authority was to invalidate laws which they believed to be unconstitutional. Now, lawyer types called this power judicial review. And so for good or ill, nine unelected, appointed for life bureaucrats who are not necessarily qualified in any way other than that they were approved by the Senate became the definitive interpreters of the Constitution. And that's had some wide-reaching effects. Today in 1836, Colonel William Barrett Travis, commander of the Texan rebels at the Alamo, wrote his famous letter asking for help as his people were surrounded by Mexican dictator Santa Ana. He addressed it to the people of Texas and all Americans in the world. It reads, Fellow citizens and compatriots, I am besieged by a thousand or more of the Mexicans under Santa Ana. I have sustained a continual bombardment and cannonade for 24 hours and have not lost a man. The enemy has demanded a surrender at discretion. Otherwise, the garrison are to be put to the sword if the fort is taken. I have answered the demand with a cannon shot and our flag still waves proudly from the walls. I shall never surrender or retreat. Then I call on you in the name of liberty, of patriotism, and everything dear to the American character to come to our aid with all dispatch. The enemy is receiving reinforcements daily and will no doubt increase to three or 4,000 in four or five days. If this call is neglected, I am determined to sustain myself as long as possible and die like a soldier who never forgets what is due to his own honor and that of his country. Victory or death. The letter has come to be a symbol and a rallying cry for the American spirit, not just in the Revolutionary War, but in all things. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. And until next time, Be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.